Now on BBC One, we've landed on Planet Showbiz. Liquid News with Christopher Price. Good evening. These are the week's headlining stories. Rolling out the rings for the greatest show on Middle Earth. Me, you and the So Solid crew, Liquid News gets a special invite to their tower block HQ. And putting out the feet of flames, flatly talks life after fancy dance. Hello, my name is Christopher. Welcome to the highlights of our nightly live show from over on BBC Choice. Now, if there's one thing that's guaranteed to warm up any winter evening, it's a spit roast with two hobbits and an elf thrown in for good measure. The world premiere of Lord of the Rings took place in a darkened room in London this week. Lots of stars turned up, as usual, but they then had to sit through three hours of hobbit-on-hobbit -hobbit goblin action. Reporting from the after show for Liquid News, Alex Stanger. Just months ago, this place, the Tobacco Docks in London, were turned into a French whorehouse for the Moulin Rouge party. And now for Lord of the Rings, it's been turned into Middle Earth. Well, it had to be big. After all, the Lord of the Rings trilogy is one of the most ambitious movie projects ever undertaken. This was the bash for the first instalment, which, according to the critics, is already running rings round that other piece of celluloid magic, Harry Potter. I'd never seen the film with an audience, you know, it was my first time, and I tell you what, it made, um, it made all the hard work over the last six years kind of just dis dissolve away. Ah, it's the third time I've seen the movie, so it's, it just gets better every time. And to see it with an audience like that was fantastic. I'm so freaked out. I can't believe it, my mum loved it, so that's the main thing. The majority of thumbs may have been skywards, but there has been a voice of discontent from creator J.R.R. Tolkien's camp. His son Christopher has gone on the record to say he thinks the book's peculiarly unsuitable for a big screen adaptation. But Tolkien fan and old acquaintance Christopher Lee disagrees. I think it is very true to Tolkien's work. Uh, you can't do it word for word and page for page, that's impossible, but I do believe that it is in the spirit of what he wrote in his books. And I think he would be pleased. The Higgledy Piggledy premiere party was the first in many for the Lord of the Rings Fellowship and perhaps the last time they'd meet before the cinema-going world would be calling them by their characters' names. And that is an encouraging thought. I don't look much like Gandalf in real life, do I? I don't have a long beard and a, a pointy hat and uh, or such, quite such large nose. No, I think I'm fairly safe. No, it's Elijah Wood who's going to be Frodo forevermore. But one celebrity who probably won't make it to parties two and three is Frank Skinner. Well, I was a big fan of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, and it was like that without the jokes. <laughs> yeah, and an hour and a half longer. And worst of all, Enya. Oh, suit his elf, Frank. Alex Stanger, BBC News. Let's meet our guest making her third appearance on my bonquette. It's the global selling artiste that is Miss Samantha Mumba. And also with us is the uh, stand-up uh, sell-out success that is comedian Ross Noble. You're big internationally as well, of course. Yeah, I was actually in New Zealand when they were making Lord of the Rings. And everyone over there has just, like, sandwich shops have just started going, oh, yeah, we supplied sandwiches to the Lord of the Rings people. And then you realise you get quite impressed and you start going there, and then you realise that basically everyone in New Zealand was involved mm. in that film, mm. you know? Just family butchers have started wearing ears, going, yeah, we're the chief meat suppliers for Lord mm. of the Rings. And... But do you, have you been to New Zealand? Um, no, I haven't yet. Oh, there's one place you haven't broken. No, well, actually, everything's gone really well there, too. <laughs> but, if you, but if you do go there, you'll be expected to perform in hobbity ears. With ears. And you'll have little hairy feet that. as well. Hobbits, elves, kind of goblins, trolls. I mean, do, I love it. How, how do you feel? I mean, God, I can't believe I just asked how that. How do you question. feel about elves? <laughs> I'm That's not well, I've got a head of right flu. There. How do you feel? about elves and goblins are you do you like love them it. oh no i love seeing films like that your mind just goes somewhere else i think it's great mm. yeah because island leprechauns well no but if we're talking about that that's what you know yeah we don't really have a tradition of, of small people do we? No, paul daniels <laughs> <laughs> he's actually yeah, in that's the a film different breed, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and he's slightly magic as well <laughs> I do, uh, i'm not sure about that um you, do you go to these um premieres quite a lot or um, no i don't actually um i got invited to quite a few when i was in america um but i was working so i couldn't go to anything mm. you must um, have been to one though 
No, I didn't actually. You've I never haven't. been to one no, ever? No, my first one will be my own movie. Mm. Mm. Time Machine, of course, Time uh, Machine. coming up. Yes. Um, just a little bit about that. Is that a Spielberg film? He didn't direct it, did he? No, it's a DreamWorks movie. Um, he mm. was heavily involved in casting and in the whole storyline and everything. Um, but he didn't direct, no. Have you got his mobile phone number? Um, not on me. No, but you do Why? have it, though, don't <laughs> no, you? I don't. Do you not have I it? don't. I'm sure my manager does. Okay, good. So. I don't have it either. What do you? Mm, no. Still ahead, Arnie in skiing holiday declaration, plus Anna Nicole Smith, cups for court. First, so the uh, hideously kinky actress Kate Winslet has been granted a quickie divorce from her estranged husband is not weird it's quite normal the uh, Titanic star was granted a decree nice side from Jim Threppleton during a 90-second hearing at the High Court in London the 27 year old spit from the assistant director in September after being wed for three years Kate is now getting it on with American beauty director Sam Mendes tough tit Arnold Schwarzenegger ended up in a Santa Monica hospital after taking a tumble from his high-powered motorbike Arnie broke a couple of ribs in the accident near his California home. The uh, pumper, oh, he's jiggling about, look at that, man breasts. The pumper, who's just <laughs> clinched a record $30 million paycheck to return in Terminator 3, was said to be in good spirits, although a little bit sore. His publicist says his injuries are not serious, and Arnie says this won't interfere with his family Christmas skiing holiday. I can sleep well now. Former Playboy playmate Anna Nicole Smith is riding the legal bucking bronco once again over her dead husband's $474 million estate. The US federal court has been hearing how she's been trying to get her hands on his assets ever since he got his on hers. The stripper and professional dirty old man, J. Howard Marshall, married at a drive-in chapel in 1994 when she was 26 and he was 89. Clever Anna was awarded the loot by California court, but the son has now taken it to the federal level for another appeal. Now, there was, do you like those stories, any of those? I liked Schwarzenegger coming off his bike. I thought his man boobs would have actually protected him. You know. You think he was a bit too fleshy than he should have been? Yeah, he should have dragged himself along the floor, Terminator 2 style, just, you know, on his man boobs. Mm. Any thoughts on man breasts? Um, look, I mean, yeah, I think they're fine. They're fine? They're fine. 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 Excellent. Yeah, we're in. It's had the mumba seal of approval. <laughs> Excellent stuff. <laughs> okay, Be proud boobs. of your man boobs. <laughs> we're off to another premiere, which you wouldn't have been to, because no. you don't do that kind of... I didn't go, and you... Don't look at me like you, you wouldn't have been invited. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have been. You corduroy-clad freak. <laughs> like, anyone's going to invite you. It's the Mah we'll never Thanks invite for that, look. That was nice. We're going off to Muhammad Ali thing. Do you like yes. him? I love Will Smith. Oh, good. Pe love him. Oh, right, not Muhammad Ali, though, anyway. There was plenty of punch, and everyone got drunker this week following the royal premiere of the Muhammad Ali biopic. Will Smith... Uh, so I don't know why I just <laughs> don't know. So Will Smith led the rumble in the central London jungle after Prince Charles had given him the five-finger Ali handshake shuffle. Sounds a little rude, that. He then went 15 rounds with Liquid News heavyweight reporter Rebecca Henry Cooper. <laughs> Proof then that where there's a will, there's a way, and his was late. Still, his adoring public didn't seem to mind. It was his premiere, he was playing the greatest, and at his party, he was still playing the part. With good reason. Everyone thought he was marvellous, darling. And he just met our royalty. Hey. Liquid news, yeah, cool. Absolutely. News you can drink. It was flipping marvellous. He's got the, the voice down, the, the moves. He's just, you know, he's, he's, he's flawless. For Will, taking on the part of the world's biggest champ wasn't an easy choice. He trained for over a year and fooled the professionals. He was good. He was good. I think he could even done more. And obviously that bit's gone to Mr. Smith's head. How confident? Who would you take on in the ring? Oh, me and you could go. Yeah. You want a few bucks? I, you bucks? No. <laughs> I duck very well though. <laughs> <laughs> this lot were the privileged few. They got to see the Alley biopic a whole three months earlier than the rest of the UK. The film, directed by Michael the Insider Man, will get its release in February. Well, of course, it's a real coup, the UK getting the world premiere before even Muhammad Ali's seen it. But, of course, the testing time will be in the States tomorrow. After all, it could lead for an Oscar nomination for Mr Will Smith. And by the time Will had finished munching his hagen dazs he was dragged out the door to catch his celeb plane home in order to shamboozle the press stateside. Ah! Rumble, young man, rumble! Rebecca Cooper, BBC News.
frankly not very interested in boxing and the Muhammad Ali story best told through a documentary. I was just, however, this looks fantastic. I'd go and see this. I'm big into boxing, though. I think it's great. Do you go ringside? Um, I've never been to a live fight. I'd love to go to, like, Mike Tyson's my favourite boxer. I'd love to go to, like, a Mike Tyson match or something. What is Ooh. it What is it about, kind of, that that, that gets you? I know you? all the masculinity. I just love it all. I think it's great. Yeah, but yet you don't like Sean Bean particularly for his masculine looks. OK, come on now. Yeah, but there's a difference between going, <laughs> there's a difference really. between going ringside and going to a barn in Sheffield. <laughs> and seeing Yorkshire blokes fighting it out. You've just got it in you for know. Yorkshire, haven't you? I haven't got it in for Yorkshire. I think Yorkshire's great. No. The problem with that little report there was the fact that what's her face, and I'm not a big fan of her, I don't mean to be rude about her, but what's her. Uh, Help me out with no, the name. You know, the it girl woman. Oh, oh um, Tamara Beckwith. Tamara Beckwith. Yeah. She doesn't care about boxing. What's well, who would have thought that lovely Samantha Mumba would care about a physical sport which can end up in brain yeah, damage? But you can tell she can obviously handle herself. You know, if we all now stripped down to our pants and started throwing fists and around the place, you know, I know who's going to be out the ring first. And it's not going to be her, is it? Do you, you know? do any karate shit? I'd love actually to something. take up um, kickboxing stuff. I just I haven't had time. It's really been hectic. There's a um, lot for you to do next year, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, but kickboxing, that type of thing, I'd be really interested Did in. Did you do that spin in your video when you go along and you're. No, I Jackie didn't. Jackie Chan no, style. I didn't. I just stunned over for that. Yeah, no, it looked yeah. cool. Stop bursting the show business bubble there. Oh, Lots sorry. of kids will be very upset all around the world yes. now. Still ahead on this edition, we're going to find out a lot more, I think, on this programme. Brian r and is it out of A&E and hanging tough with the So Solids. Look at Music News is next. Yes, Brian Harvey has two-stepped out of hospital after having emergency head surgery. The ex-East 17 er singer snuck out of Nottingham City Hospital disguised as a garden gnome, accompanied by his model girlfriend, Emma B. No surname. Police are still looking for three men who assaulted him at the works club by hitting him over the head with something sharp. After leaving hospital, Brian stepped up to the mic to big up his medical crew. They've just been brilliant. They've looked after me and they've, they've done a really good job on my head. And um, I can't thank them enough. I really can't thank them enough. What are you going to say about the people who did this to you? I ain't, I ain't going to say anything. I'll let, the, I'll let the police sort that out, you know. What are you going to do now, Brian? I'm going home to bed. Still there. <laughs> the, uh, does that amuse you? It's a serious head injury. It's a, no, sorry, I wasn't laughing at a man's head injury. That would be a terrible thing. What were you thing. laughing at? I was laughing at the fact that he was wearing a top with Harlem written on it <laughs> when he's quite blatantly from Walthamstow, but he would need a much It's aspirational. Bigger, you know, he would have to start Walthamstow and write it right across his arms like that. <laughs> so he's just gone, oh, I'll pick Harlem. That'll do, you know. Stusky and Hutch? Big fan? Uh, nope. Yes. No. Well, you just go to sleep for this story. Okay. Uh, because the uh, bank balance of former silver lady lover, David Sarr, didn't mean Mrs. Whitehouse there, is a tad healthier after he won substantial libel damages over a bad review of one of his plays. The blonde half of Starsky and Hutch was awarded an estimated £20,000 after former Mirror Show business columnist Matthew Wright said that Soul's dead monkey play was the worst he'd ever seen. The star took the journalist to court after the most that Wright hadn't actually seen the dead monkey. Monkey. The Mirror has also agreed to pay out around £150,000. That's in court costs. Dead Monkey, you wouldn't, you would go and see it, wouldn't you? I saw that. It was just David <laughs> Be careful. careful for an hour, just lying there with a banana <laughs> like that. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> We just stressed that was just comedy and it's yes, not true. I was just like, making that up. Imagine if I You'll be so taken to court. Samantha's <laughs> the only one with that kind of money around here. I can tell you. Now, the So Solid crew mm, have uh, blamed uh, Chief Inspector Knacker of the Yard for the cancellation of their national tour, which is 21 seconds to go. In their first TV chat, see, I was doing that now, I was doing the wiki thing almost. Yeah. In their first TV chat since the gigs were cancelled, the UK Garage Collective of Tolik would news that they're all as pleasant as pussies. Plot became involved following a boom boom shooting during a solid appearance in London. To put the case for the defence, the crew invited Liquid News down to their Battersea estate. Colin Patterson was a lucky man. Could I have a flag jacket, please? Afghanistan? Interviewing so solid crew. MAC, so solid, for the family. Ashwood the DF, so solid, actor MC, you know the rest. RV, the hype man, this, I'm just hype, I'm just mad. Mr. Shab, so solid, yeah, producer, chilling. We're gonna take you on a little tour of our area. Of our ghetto paradise, yeah. From two percent in society family. Second the chips in the bricks, you'll see. Whose fault do you say it is that the two had to, to go off? Their insight is that, or what they feel is that we're gonna incite violence throughout our tour or it's gonna follow us or whatever in it. And if they got a fear of that, 
and there's going to be young kids in the auditorium and they feel that that's going to happen, then fair enough, isn't it? Like, what, what, what are you going to do? If, if it was my kid and I was out of social and I weren't in it, I might stop my kids from going as well, innit? You, you never know, innit? But this is my home, but Badger Court, yeah? This, this, this estate has changed so much now, yeah? Oh. This is where it feels, oh no. That opening shot where you get the dog and you're under the arches. That's right, where's, yeah. Where's that? That's it, yeah, yeah. Oh no, that's the word. <laughs> One thing that always does have to be mentioned with the So Solid crew is that a number of you have got into trouble. We're, we're a family, innit? And just like you would, you, you're, 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 you're a mother and your son does something wrong, you're still going to love your son, innit? So we will still love each other and we get on with it, man, solve the problems, you know what I'm saying? So we stick together, man, no matter what, what happens. It's just a big family. Liquid news. Peace. So Solid crew, no flag jacket required. Well, today. Anyway, Colin Patterson, BBC News. They seem like actually nice boys down there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've seen your act, and it's uh, <laughs> and yeah, you don't no, like garage no, music the, the at all, night, do you? The you were in, I just happened to have a bit of a rant about garage music. No, I like the fact that they've said that they're uh, they're a family. I think they should be. Uh, they should replace the Bisto family. You know, all <laughs> sitting round like that, giving it. And I like the fact that you know they're making knitwear cool again. Mm. You know, they're all wearing their big knitted hats. Maybe it's cardigans is the next thing. You never and know then those big go. fluffy moon boots. Samantha, what do you think about this uh, this garage problem that, that they seem to have at the moment? What they say is they're singing about their real life experiences mm. in Battersea, uh, which is normally quite nice as well. But anyway, that's their real life experiences, yeah. and they're not sending out an anti gun message. You're just saying what it was like. What do you think? I mean, I think I think they're a great act. I mean, surely they can't help what crowd they attract. Um, and what people come in to see their shows. I mean, I, I agree with what the guy said there. I mean, if you had children, you don't want your children in that situation. So I can totally see why it's happened. But, I mean, but I think do, they're do great. you not think they should send an anti-gun message? Because it's not so much, it's, it's not an anti. They are saying what happened to them, which is fair enough. I think they should just send their anti. <laughs> but are they sending a gun message? No. Well, it's not a negative one, per se. I don't know. It's I don't very know. deep. I think, I think it? it's mods and rockers all over again. It is. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk more about our featured artist, who is Samantha Mumba right now. Are you? Yeah. Okay. It could have been Ross, but, you know, yeah. it, was a, yeah. it was neither or situation. I'd go with Samantha. The uh, you. teen, it's... Uh, how old are you, by the way? 18. Girls? 18. Yeah. Do you feel older beyond your years, though? Um, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Should we call you 25? The 25-year-old okay. Samantha <laughs> Mamba is fast becoming a global phenomenon who now boasts an address book including oh, Bono's, Bono's uh, mobile phone number. You Apparently. know what? That's all been blown out of proportion. Yeah, but I mean. So that's all I know about this. Don't have a go at me. No, yeah, cool, we do. But it's not something that I feel the need to be saying to every interviewer. Do you know that me and Bono text each other? I mean, that's just a bit sad. But you didn't say that. I said it. Yeah, but giving the impression. He just said you had the number, but you know, now you've. And now I've gone and taken it to the next the level, haven't I? So you have. Right, right, okay, I was I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> Should we talk about the new single? Yes. It's lately. Yes. It's out and it's lovely. Here's Thank the clip. of a storm touching ground I wish that I could weather in a storm But I guess it was a heartbreak from the norm Was a day I will always remember The saddest day in sweet November that guy. You know what? No, I've got to even apologise to the guy yeah. himself. He came to the video shoot. He doesn't even look like that. He was a gorgeous guy. So they took pictures of him for the video and then they went and did all crazy stuff to him and made him look like that. It's, I don't know, it's scary. He's not actually Chinese. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but I mean, they just they made Sean everything. Bean. I think yeah. so. They made everything. They did the whole Pierre Gillet um, thing to him. I think you're backpedaling. I think at the video shoot. <laughs> no, I'm not. Shoot, seriously. You went, I want a random Chinese man <laughs> on my wall. That's because you weren't available. I know. I know. Mm. Are you I saying I look Chinese? <laughs>
<laughs> Which is a smidgen. Yeah, totally, That's mate. Nice. <laughs> what a year for you. Because um, we met some time ago when you were okay. releasing your first single okay. and you came on our show. And who, I mean, could you have dreamt this? I mean, this is quite no, phenomenal, really, what's happened. Crazy. It's absolutely bizarre. This whole year has gone so quickly and everything's kind of crammed in. It's brilliant. We talk about artists from this side of the Atlantic, uh, kind of Ireland and Britain, mm. not having any success in America. And they're always going over there to try and crack it. Mm. You've kind of done really well over there, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, it actually almost happened by mistake. I mean, I didn't even think with the first <laughs> album I'd Your manager would be happy to hear that. Any songs. No, seriously, it did. I mean, DJs came over, heard it over here, took it back, and all of a sudden it started spreading on all the radio airplay. And then all of a sudden it got to, like, number one. It was outrageous. Um, but look, I've been very lucky this year. Yeah. So. And you've made that Chinese man's life. <laughs> He's, he hates me now, probably, because he's oh, a gorgeous no. guy, and I don't know what they did to him. I really yeah. can't explain that. Are you, are you quite happy in yourself at the moment, genuinely hand on heart? You, you tell very me, happy, you know, I am. No, I'm really happy. The last time I saw you when you came on the show, I don't know, you just felt really kind of tired a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, I was knackered the last time I came on, but I'm all refreshed and happy and yeah. excited about Christmas. But is it, I mean, being a pop star, being a kind of musician like you are, it's just this part of the job it just seems really quite mundane coming and talking to ross and myself for example. No, see, i like this stuff i love your show yeah but that's right thank you very much I but do. there must be bits of it yeah. when you and just me now, <laughs> <Ross> now. <laughs> but don't you sometimes think you know i mean you look at the price that people pay sometimes like you know robbie williams and mariah carey when they get you know really big and you're kind of going in that direction Ooh. does it cross your mind Ooh. all that kind of huge superstar now that might scares do? me now that i'm not really on that buzz at all um i mean i think with mariah carey it's a different story in america i mean people will lie down on the ground for you to walk on if you want it's a whole different scenario people believe that the hype they've got people every day saying oh you're so gorgeous you're so this you're everything and i just i think that's got to mess with your head after a while just finally christmas and the new year uh, you threw up in a burger wrapper in dublin <laughs> last new year you did. I did not. New Year's Eve, you I did. I so didn't do you that. You told me, I think. I so didn't did do Did you not? That. You're going to new, to the States for this year for New Year's. Yes, I am. You did throw up a New Year I last did year. throw up in a burger. Well, that was Ross who did it. <laughs> yeah, you see? I know it's easy to confuse the two of us. Yeah. You know, but... We've got to move on. Anyway, thank you very much for coming thank back. Thank you. Good luck. It's going so well, but it's really nice to see you. Anyway, I'm coming over all Santa right now because I'm giving away prizes. Oh. A little Can bit more, some? thank you. We have Sorry. some uh, Samantha. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo, that's what we want. Woo -hoo. <laughs> Imagine Yay. it's the swap shop, thank you. We have Samantha Booty in the shape of you brought t shirts, apparently. Did I? Yes. <laughs> okay. Your record company did. <laughs> At the uh, latest CD in this week's competition, Generous to a Fault. Uh, we're also handing out two pairs, slightly bigger prize this one, of VIP tickets for the New Year's Eve Gate Crasher Bash, which will be in Cardiff, featuring my favourite uh, legal raver, Judge Jules. If you fancy all that, then please go on to our website, which is bbc.co.uk. I'm giving away my shoes as well. You can have them. Now that your trainers smell quite bad, you were saying. No, I just wrote that on the little form for fun. All oh, right, thank you yeah. very much. Up next on this edition, Flatley's <laughs> Feet Talk to Us, plus dressing up like a dog. It's Liquid Life. We're off to a fashion show. Yay! Yeah. You see, I've got the hang of this now. <laughs> <laughs> just pretend it's early morning. I don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. It's a fashion show where the models really are hounds and as thin as whippets. The National Canine Defence League uh, invited celebrities and their mutts to catwalk wearing designer dog togs, which were then bought for uh, many ridiculous but very worthy, worthy Aww. hounds. I Isn't love the nice? idea of this. Yeah, reporting for Liquid News, Jane Garbard. At designer fashion shows, they can be a bit sniffy about cameras going backstage. Now, we're not actually allowed backstage, but believe me, there are some pretty hot bitches back there and they're all pouring each other right now. And we're going to give them to you doggy style. In the meantime, meet Moose. Barbara Woodhouse, eat your heart out. Moose? <laughs> so here you are, a yelping pack of celebs and their doggies, showing off one-off designer dog coats specially made for the National Canine Defence League and to be auctioned off at the end of the night. We've had Jean Muir, Vivian Westwood, um, Oswald Boateng. We've had all sorts of the real top designers. She is wearing Maharishi, very smart label. Honey's not somebody who'd normally wear a coat, but lots of greyhounds and whippets would need coats. She does look very good. She's a little bit chubby because she has put a little bit of weight, so it's rather a tight squeeze for her fitting. Wendy Richards is the Brigitte Bardot of the terrier world, and hers has been in more TV shows than she has. She gets fan mail from other Cairn Terriers. <laughs> she does, and I have to answer them. I have to say, this is the campest thing I've ever done in my whole life. 
Nobby was in a Vivian Westwood, which is why he did not want to leave the stage, because his mummy doesn't even own a Vivian Westwood. <laughs> <laughs> which is where the big money was when it came to the auction. £450, pounds and it is sold. That and the Toby Pimlico. This is mine. I'm very, very proud. I've just found out, actually, that these two ladies were bidding against me, because we all wanted this one, but... Oh, and how much do you pay in? Uh, 300 pounds. But according to the experts, these are a good buy. And in 20 years' time, if you don't put it on a dog and it goes into the bottom of the, the bottom drawer and you take it to the road show in 20 years' time, who knows what it's going to be worth? This a one-off John Smedley. Now, it would be too disturbing for us to show you what happened next. I'll simply say the words man with net and yellow van. Jane Goddard, BBC News. Enjoy going down there. This is it, and it costs an awful lot of money. You have a dog, quickly, do. don't you? What's do. his or her name? Foxy. Foxy lady. <laughs> I'm just saying else like that. No dog for you. Yes, I've got a dog. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Yeah. I couldn't my see you with a dog. My dog's called Winston, named right. after Stan Winston, right. the special effects. Moving on. Uh, show business worthies have been tucking into an early Christmas dinner and uh, raising a glass of booze with the Irish cross country dancing champion Michael Flatley. He's not Irish. <laughs> what is he? American. Well, not really. He's a hobbit. We haven't got time to discuss this. I know he's from Chicago. Bear yeah, with so, me. Okay. Six months after retiring from the world of Jiggy Jiggy, uh, Flatley was being honoured by the Variety Club for his outstanding charity work for children. You happy with that? Yeah. Reporting <laughs> <laughs> is Jeff Moody. <laughs> Michael Flatley's the greatest Irish entertainer since Colleen Nolan, and this year's Variety Club Christmas Chowdown was in his honour. It's a tremendous honour for me, and uh, it's one that I'll remember for a long time. I so admire uh, the Variety Club and everything that they stand for, and uh, I love little children. But his dancing's not too bad either. Since being fired from Riverdance, he's gone on to front Lord of the Dance and Feet of Flames, and he holds the record for the most taps per second. 35, to be precise. The annual Christmas bash is a chance for worthy folk to share an intimate dinner with their showbiz pals and to catch up on old times. Leading a quiet life, yes. Um, occasionally putting my head above the parapet. Do you miss it? No, I don't. Not at all? No. Not being interviewed? Certainly not. For people like me? Not. Of course, with so many celebs in one place, it's a perfect chance for a little career development. This is Shana Daly, fresh from performing at Ground Zero. And it's certainly a good cause. Over the last 30 years, the Variety Club have raised over £165 million. Hey, Jane, do you actually match here? Do you mind? But the real honours go to Michael Flatley. He's announced he's retiring from the stage and will spend some of his fortune on buying a castle in Ireland. And seeing as he's the third highest earning entertainer in Europe, that's some lord of the manor. Jeff Moody, ABC News. You would, though, wouldn't you? Look at that body. Oh, oh I wouldn't if you paid me. <laughs> no. <laughs> ah, that came right Have wrong. you ever met him? Yes. And? And? I bet he tried come on to you a little no, bit. No, please. He was too busy looking in a mirror or something. I've got to say goodbye. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you, you very too. much for I coming. You Thank you very much. And Ross, lovely to meet you. I still feel quite Great nauseous. national tour coming up uh, after the new year. I hope you go and see him in the, here in Britain. Before we go, let's have a look at the uh, week's uh, top stories. Here they are. The world has seen the first Ring movie and they like it. The world premiere of Lord of the Rings took place in London. UK Garage Posse, the So Solid crew, are blaming police after their tour was scrapped following a shooting at one of their appearances. And not Irish, Michael Flatley, Chicago. has been honoured by the Variety Club for his marvellous, marvellous feet. Ooh, there's not enough money, you're really right about that. Yeah. That's it from us for this week, uh, although you have, haven't you? For more of the uh, very best coverage of entertainment news, I hope you join us live, that's every weeknight, on BBC Choice at 7 o'clock. You watch, don't you? I do. With bated breath. You're good, aren't you? Also, we're back on BBC One on Thursday night. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and goodbye.